اعوذبلّہشیطانرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ ہیلو ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دس از یور فرحت میم ہوپ یو آل آر ویل ایز وی آر فیسنگ دا ڈیفیکلٹ سچویشن ناؤ ڈیز بیکاز آف دس ایمرجنسی سچویشن وی ہیو کم اپ ود آن لائن اسٹڈنگ میٹیریل وچ ول ہیلپ یو learn the lessons in your curriculum this class is meant for the students of green hills experimental school enroll in class 4th and today i am sharing the topic with you and that is the northern mountains and the northern plains northern plains are situated between the himalayas in the north and the deccan plateau in the south northern plains are divided into three basin ganga basin in middle second one brahmaputra basin in east and number third satluj basin in west then northern mountains There are long ranges of mountains in the northern India. They include the Karakoram, Ladakh and the Himalayan ranges of mountain. The Himalayan stretches from Kashmir in the west to Arunachal Pradesh from the east. Mm-hmm. Now, dear students, open page number 21 of your book. the northern mountains and the northern plains on your marks have you ever been to a hill station write yes or no for the questions given below first one did you see mountains and valley number two did the mountain roads give you a roller coaster ride number three did you see snow capped peaks number four Were the trees over there very tall and erect? Number five, did you notice how elevation of the land increased gradually as you moved closer to your destination? You have to mark yes or no in the given boxes. Now, look at the box given here. I shall learn about what are mountains like. about the three parallel ranges of the himalayas about the importance of himalayas about life in the himalayas about the northern plains of india now dear students we will f- start from here the northern mountains mountains are areas of land that have risen high above the surrounding areas temperature falls with increase in height therefore mountains regions have a cool climate in case of very high mountains peaks remain covered with snow around the year the northern boundary of the country is covered by mountains they are known as the northern mountains they include the himalayas karakoram sorry karakoram and some hill ranges in the northeast the himalayan mountains the himalayas is a majestic mountain range it is the highest and one of the longest mountain ranges in the world it extends for about 2400 km from east to west and its width varies from 400 km in kashmir to 150 km in the north east in india it stretches in a curve from jammu and kashmir in the west to arunachal pradesh in the east thus separating india and china through a natural boundary I refer to the map of the himalayan mountain range in the students booklet some of the highest peaks in the world are in the himalayas 
name of the peak altitude and location first one is everest its altitude is 8848 meter and the location is nepal then number 2 k2 its altitude is 8611 meter and the location is pakistan number 3 kanchenjunga its altitude is 8586 meter and the location is india look at the picture given here mount everest in the himadri region is the highest peak in the world the himalayas are divided into three polar ranges first one is the greater himalayas called himadri has an average height of 6000 meter and it is the highest range in the himalayas number 2 the middle or lesser himalayas called himachal lies to the south of the himadri and has an average height of 3700 to 4500 meters number 3 the outer himalayas or the southern most range of the himalayas are known as the shivaliks the average height here is from 900 to 1200 meter then <coughs> the great himalayas the greater himalayas or himadri is the nor- northern most and highest range of the himalayas the peaks are permanently covered with snow mount everest the highest peak in the world lies in this range in nepal kanchenjunga nanda devi and nanga parbat are the highest peaks of the greater himalayas in india the temperature remains very low throughout the year and cultivation is not possible at such a height thus this area is not fit for human settlement now look at the box here you know what the siachen glacier is located in the karakoram region and is the highest battlefield on earth standing at an altitude of over 5400 meter soldiers of both the indian and pakistani armies guard their borders here <coughs> number uh, next the middle or lesser himalayas this range lies between the himadri and the shivalik range the mountains here are not as high and the temperatures are not as low as as in the himadri range rohtang pass is a high mountain pass in this range that connects the kulu valley with the lahul and spiti valleys of himachal pradesh This range has cold winters and mild summers. The mountain slopes are covered by dense forests of pine, oak, deodar and fir which provide forest products like wood, fodder and fuel. The hill slopes are used for practicing terrace farming. Fruit orchards and tea plantation are present in this region therefore unlike the greater himalayas the lesser himalayas are well populated then dear students look up glacier means a slowly moving mass of ice mountain pass means a road through a mountain range used to cross the mountains then terrace forming forming practiced on slopes that have been cut into steps then dear students look at the box given here valley tube the valley of flowers in the west himalayas is famous for its numerous varieties of flowers we must not pluck flowers and destroy the natural beauty dear students there there are two pictures given first one is terrace farming practiced in the himalayas and second one is a tea plantation in skim 
Many popular valleys like valleys valleys of Klo, Kangra and Kashmir and hill stations like Masuri, Shimla, Nainital and Darjeeling are located in this region. Now look at the box again. You know what? The Kanchenjunga is the highest mountain peak in India. It is the third highest mountain in the world which lies partly in Nepal and partly in Sikkim, India. The Lord Himalayas. The Shivaliks or the Outer Himalayas is the southern most and lowest range of the Himalayas. Shivaliks is known for the presence of special scenic valleys called Jans. For example, Dharadun, Patidun, Kotridun and Pinchodun. The hills in this region are covered with dense forests and inhabited by rich wildlife. Its slopes are used for cattle rearing and growing crops like rice, potato and maize. Dear students, look at the box. You know what? The Shualik Hills is said to be the storehouse of timber. And here the picture are given. Dune Valley in Uttarakhand. In North India, this range marks the end of mountains and the beginning of plains. In between them lies the Jarai, which is a dense marshy land. Crops like rice, wheat and sugar cane are mainly cultivated here. Now, dear students, we have the activity part here. Number one, find out the reasons for the following. Number one, the Himalayan region is full of conical shaped trees like pine, spruce and fir because it keeps them from falling over in the winter from too much snow collecting on them. Mountaineers carry oxygen cylinders while climbing high mountains. To avoid suffocation as we go higher and higher at high altitudes, amount of oxygen present in the atmosphere is determined by atmospheric pressure as we know. Number third, Himalayan rivers are perennial in nature because they have water in them throughout the year. Then we have the importance of Himalayas. Number one, the Himalayas acted as a natural barrier against foreign invaders in the past. Historically, it has prevented unfriendly arrivals and attacks from the other side of the mountains. Number two, it forms a natural boundary between India and neighbors like China. Number three, it protects our country from the cold winds of the north. Number four, it prevents the rain-bearing winds from leaving the country. This results in heavy rainfall in India. Number five. The melting snow of the Himalayas gives rise to some of the major rivers like the Ganga and the Yamuna. These rivers are called perennial rivers because they have water throughout the year. Number six. Many valuable products like timber, resin, medicines, etc. are obtained from the forest in this mountain range. Number seven, it also sustains a very rich variety of plants and animals which is not seen in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. The forests of the Himalayas are home to many animals such as yaks, goats, snow, leopards, musk deer and wild sheep. Now, dear students, think about it. There are thousands of glaciers in the Himalayas. These are melting fast due to change in the climatic conditions. How will this affect us? Life in the Himalayas. Life is somewhat difficult in the mountains. Many places still do not have proper roads and connectivity to the outside world. 
She prearing is practiced by the people in this region. Fruits and a few crops are grown as a means of livelihood. Many people are part of the cottage industry such as wood carving, weaving of carpets, making woolen cloths, etc. Fruits like apple, orange, peach and plum are grown and sold. During winters, people have to adjust to the harsh weather conditions. Some of the Indian states situated in the Himalayas are Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. The picture are given here. Dear students, look at the picture. Carpet weaving in Kashmir. The Northern Plains Plains are large stretches of flat land. Such areas of land are usually fertile and have a climate suitable for agriculture. They are suitable for large-scale farming. It is easy to construct buildings on plains. Most industries develop along the banks of rivers because of every availability of water. People prefer to settle down in the plains because of these reasons. As a result of all these plains are generally well populated and grow into cities. The Northern or Indo Indo Gangetic plants are amongst the largest and the most fertile plains in the world. They are located to the south of the Himalayan range. They cover the greater part of North India and are hence known as the Northern Plains. These plains extend 3,200 km across east to west and are 240 to 320 km wide spanning from Punjab. In the west parts of Assam, in the east covering states like Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal and Delhi. Throughout their expense, they remain abroad, flat and level region. Refer to the map showing northern plains of India in the student's booklet. These plains are extremely fertile because of two reasons. Now dear students, look at the box given here. You know what? The Ganga and its tributaries are prone to flooding. In 2008, the Kosi floods affected almost 30 lakh people. Now the another one, think about it. The Ganga has been polluted by humans. In 1986, the Ganga action plan was launched by the former Prime Minister, late Rajiv Gandhi. It was meant to lessen the pollution of the river. However, the project was not very successful. Now, here, these plains are extremely fertile because of two reasons. One, they are very well drained due to the perennial rivers originating in the Himalayas flowing through them. Two, the rivers bring along with them pieces of rock, sand and silt. The, the finer silt, when deposited by the rivers, forms the highly fertile aluminum. The fertile plains make agriculture profitable. There are three large river basins that from the northern plains. Number one, the Ganga Basin in the center. Number two, the Satluj Basin in the west. Number three, the Brahmaputra Basin in the east. These rivers cover a large area and form a network throughout the plains. Now, dear students, look up. Basins means large low-lying area watered by a river and its tributaries. Yield means supply. Now, dear students, look at the picture given here.
pilgrims taking a holy bath in Ganga in Allahabad during the Kumbh Mela festival. Then we have the first one, the Ganga Basin. The Ganga originates from the Gangotri Glacier in the Himalayas. It flows through the states of Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal. Yamuna is its main tributary. River Ganga meets River Yamuna at Allahabad. The meeting point is known as Sangam. Rainfall is received during monsoon and eastern part of the plain re receives more rain than the western part. Along with the river Brahmaputra, the, the Ganga forms the world's largest delta, known as Ganga-Brahmaputra Delta. After this, the river splits into many small rivers before entering the Bay of Bengal. At its mouth lies the dense Sundarban forest which is the natural habitat of the famous Royal Bengal Tiger. The Ganga Basin produces more food than any other part of the country. Healthy yields of rice, wheat, jute and sugarcane are produced here. Fishing, navigation, hydroelectricity generation and industries like cotton textiles, textiles and sugar mills are supported by the river. Now dear students, look at the picture, a river and its delta. Some of the oldest and most densely populated cities in the world like Delhi, Agra, Allahabad, Varanasi and Patna are situated here which provide employment opportunities. To the people living here, a good network of roads and railways has also been built in these areas. The flood plains are extensively used for rice, tea and jute farming. In Assam, the flood plains from thick marshes where mining of petroleum is done. These marshes are also famous for their one horned rhinoceros. Look at the picture, one horned rhinoceros at Kaziranga National Park, Assam. Then we have the second one, the Brahmaputra Basin. The Brahmaputra originates in Tibet. Sorry, the Brahmaputra originates in Tibet. It is known as Sangpothir. It enters India in Arunachal Pradesh and flows to Assam. Gradually, it flows southwards and enters Bangladesh before it empties into the Bay of Bengal. It joins the Ganga to form Ganga Brahmaputra Delta. This region receives heavy rainfall and fertile soil. Produced as a result of flooding is excellent for crops like rice and shoot. Then we have the third one, the Sadluj Basin. The Sadluj originates in Tibet and enters India through the Shipkila Pass in Himachal Pradesh. Bees is the main tributary of Satluj. In India, the Satluj Basin mainly includes the states of Punjab and Haryana. The Bakra Nangal Dam built on this river is used to provide electricity and water for irrigation. The main crops produced include wheat, rice, cotton and sugarcane. The river is also harnessed at the Bakra Nangal, Nangal team to produce electricity. Amritsar, Jalandhar, Pachyala and Ludhiana are some of the important towns situated along its course. Now dear students you have the activity part 2. 
identify the famous town stees situated on at the banks of river flowing through northern plains of india with the help of the clues given below first one qutub minar at 72.5 meter is the tallest brick minaret in the world located in this city this is the national capital of india situated on the banks of river yamuna then we have the number 2 this city is also known as kashi and is the culture cultural capital of india it is north indian city on the banks of the river ganga in uttar pradesh hindus believes that death in the city will bring salvation make making it a major center for pilgrimage the city is known as worldwide for its many ghats the number 3 victoria memorial is a large marble building in the city of west bengal situated on the banks of the hugli river <coughs> then the northern mountains and the northern plains are two important physical features making the northern part of india they help us in different ways then students what you have learned from the lesson there are three parallel mountains and here are the two options what you have under, understood and what you, do you have any need, need to help here there are three parallel mountain ranges in the himalayas greater himalayas or himadri lesser himalayas or himachal and outer himalayas or shivaliks the northern plains are the fertile land areas located to the south of the himalayas the ganga the brahmaputra and the satluj are the most important rivers that drain the northern plains then we have the another part words i learned first one range means a series of mountains then number 2 alluvium means sand deposited by rivers and floods number 3 tributary a small river that joins a large one number 4 distributary a small river that separates from a large one then fifth one flood plains an area of flat land near a river that is often flooded because of the overflowing river then dear students we have the another part of this get set go number a fill in the blanks the dash is the highest mountain range and the dash is the highest peak in the world and second one the lower himalayas are also known as the dash number 3 In North India the low range marks the end of the dash and the beginning of the dash. Number 4 The Ganga originates in the dash glacier. Number 5 The Satluj enters India at the dash pass. Now number 1 The dash the Himalaya is the higher mountain range and the Mount Everest is the highest peak in the world. Number 2 The lower Himalayas are also known as the Shivaliks. Number 3 In North, North India the low range marks the end of the mountains and the beginning of the plains. Number 4 The Ganga originates in the Gangotri glacier Number 
the satluj enters india at the ship shipkila pass now we have the another part of part b choose the correct answer and fill in the blanks dear students you have to give the two options and you have to choose the correct one first one the himalayas extend dash from east to west in india second one a slow moving river of ice is called a dash third one the klo valley and lahul spiti valley lie in the dash dash reside in the sundarbans and dash in the marshes of assam fifth one the rivers dash and dash originate in tibet then first one the himalayas extend 2400 km from east to west in india second one a slow moving river of ice is called glacier third one the klo valley and lahul spiti valley lie in the himachal range fourth one the royal bengal tigers reside in the sundarbans and great indian rhinoceros in the marshes of assam fifth one the river brahmaputra and satluj originate in tibet then we have the part c answer the following in brief arrange the three ranges of himalayas from north to south first and the answer is himadri himachal and shivalik i will repeat this again himadri himachal shivalik then number 2 Name two famous tourist spots in the greater and the middle Himalayas each. And the answer is Great Himalayan Lakes and Himalayan Wildlife. I will repeat this again. Great Himalayan Lakes and Himalayan Wildlife. Or the two famous tourist spots in the greater and the middle himalayas each number 3 what is the extent of the northern plains answer it extends from river satluj to river brahmaputra i will repeat this again it extends from river satluj to river brahmaputra number 4 What is a river basin? And the answer is a river basin is the portion of land drained by a river and its tributaries. Number 5. Why are the northern plains important for India? Why are the northern plains important for India? And the answer is northern plains have fertile soil which is needed to grow crops they are drained by rivers ganga brahmaputra indus so to feed country northern plains are necessary then we have the part d answer the following in detail number 1 Where is terrace practiced in the Himalayas and why? And the answer is It is practiced in Himalayas because in Himalayas or hilly areas it prevents flooding because of its curves. I will repeat this again. 
it is practiced in himalayas because in himalayas or hilly areas it prevents flooding because of its curves number 2 differentiate between the greater himalayas and the middle himalayas each number 2 i will repeat this question again differentiate between the greater himalayas and the middle himalayas each and the answer is the greater himalayas is the highest mountain range these ranges are always covered with snow as they are high to the sea level middle himalayas is situated in the south of the himadri number 3 what is the cherry what are the crops grown in this region and the answer is the cherry is a lowland region in southern nepal and northern india that lies south of the outer foothills of the himalayas the shivalik hills and the north of the indo gangetic plains the crops grown in this region are wheat rice pulses sugarcane jute etc number 4 state five reasons why himalayas are important for us and the answer is first one it forms a natural boundary between india and neighbors like china number 2 it protects our country from the cold winds of the north number 3 it prevents the rain bearing winds from leaving the country this results in heavy rainfall in india number 4 the melting snow the melting snow of the himalayas gives rise to some of the major rivers like the ganga and the yamuna These rivers are called perennial rivers because they have water throughout the year. Number 5. Many valuable products like timber, resin, medicines, etc. are obtained from the forests in this mountain range. Then question number 5. What is delta? Describe the Ganga Brahmaputra delta. and the answer is the delta is an area of low flat land shaped like a triangle where a river splits and spreads out into several branches before entering the sea the the ganges brahmaputra delta is a river delta in the south asia region of bangladesh and in the west bengal india it is the world's largest delta the delta is also known as the brahmaputra delta the sundarbans delta or the Bang- bengal delta now number 6 why are the northern plains one of the most well populated regions of india plains are large stretches of flat land such areas of land are usually fertile and have a climate suitable for agriculture they are suitable for large scale farming it is suitable for large scale farming it is easy to construct buildings on plains most industries develop along the banks of rivers because of easy availability of water people prefer to settle down in the plains because of these reasons as a result of all these plains are generally well populated and grow into cities now dear students you have the map work on a physical map of india mark the following places the greater himalayas middle himalayas and the lower himalayas number 1 and the number 2 is 
the Kunlun Mountains. And the number three, label any two Himalayan states of India. Number four, Mount Everest, K2 and Kanchenjunga. Now you have the another part, life skills. Let's encourage ecotourism. One of the main causes of pollution in the Himalayas is excessive tourism. Thoughtless littering is causing great harm to the environment there. Let's take a pledge to promote and encourage ecotourism, which prevents tourism in general from harming the environment. Find out about the village that has been acclaimed the cleanest village in Asia in 2003. Thank you. Stay blessed.